Hi, you may have seen the video I did about pollinating of the sloes, that's a blackthorn slow, using a couple of these fine head brushes, one of them being a makeup brush from my partner, uh, Jane, and another one being a, a fine watercolour brush. And it's simply put, it's a good thing to do for these type of prunus species, which includes blackthorn, but also plums. Because if you look at a plum tree here, close up, the actual flowers show you that there's a lot of pollen and you can see the male part of the flower there which is a little yellow dot and that's where the pollen is inside there and at this time of year there's a lot of pollen made so you could self-pollinate and you could get the pollen from this tree and spread it round or you could get the pollen from another plum tree onto your little brush by brushing it off and put that across the middle of the flower where the female part is. But I've discovered something else. I have discovered from research that pollen, which is the male part of the flower, um, has an opposite charge to the female part of the flower, which is called the carpal. And the carpal has got a stigma on top, that's where the pollen lands. And then the pollen makes a pollen tube as it goes down the stigma into the style, that's a tube and then to the ovary where fertilisation takes place. So they are, have an opposite charge, so they will stick to each other. So what if you just pick some plum flowers um, from different varieties of plum trees, and these make a lot of pollen. Um, tiny little yellow grains they are under the microscope, as you can see from my vid. Um, and you just s pinch it between your fingers, say through a simple filter, into some water and then into something which can do a fine mist spray to spray it onto the flowers. Um, at the moment it's a bit rainy but I wouldn't imagine it would live very long but you could still try it and, and do it a few times over the season or just over the weeks while the flowers are out and also try using other species. For instance this is a blackthorn slow and it has quite spiny um, structure to it along the, its own branches and now in the third week of March it's in flower there are lots of it, it makes lots of pollen so I can collect some of these and because it's also a prunus species I wondered if the pollen from this mixed in some water with some plum pollen would also help to pollinate plum trees as well it's a wild fruit but people believe that a cross between a slow and a cherry plum, which is another wild um, species of prunus, may well have made other plum trees. So collecting pollen this time of year is not a bad idea. Also, if you collect pollen from a few flowers, you must be collecting a lot of pollen. You only need one pollen grain to fertilise each flower. So I've reasoned that instead of just going along with a fine head um, brush, what about if your tree is really tall? And that's where a spray gun may very much help you. So you collect the pollen and you do what I say and you just gently um, extract it by squeezing between your fingers through the filter. The petals and the rest of the flower will stay on the filter into some water, shake it up, mix it up and just spray it back onto a tree. I would try and use the different pollen varieties from a different plum tree in the garden to do this plum tree. Um, you can hear the bumblebees are out, but there aren't that many bumblebees when it's cold. I don't know whether it would work or not. Last year I tried it on a Victoria plum tree. I did feed it and I did prune it properly and it had a very heavy crop. Whether or not this technique worked or not, I don't know. But perhaps it did. If you imagine this water being full of pollen grains, I've done a video before where you can see how yellow it gets from blackthorn slow pollen. Um, what you want is a mist. This one came from B&M stores that makes a very fine mist. Watch this. Look how fine that mist spray is. Can you imagine spraying flowers with this misting spray? The chances are, I would say, a lot of pollen is going to be able to get onto your tree from another species. Now, the only trick I found which was useful, at the end of the tube, they have the filter. I took the filter off, just in case pollen grains blocked it up. 
but there is, with, uh, with this type of sprayer, surely that's going to be able to transfer pollen. I don't know whether or not it will stick to the female part of the flower, that's a stigma that it has to stick to. But I do know a lot of pollen can be transferred from one tree to another and I won't know the results until the crops come along. And even then I don't know whether the bumblebees have done it or I've assisted them. But if it does work, um, surely it would help your trees get better crops. And the technique may work with other species such as canemelies or Japanese quince. Look how much pollen grains get produced in these beautiful flowers. Surely if you just collected a couple of flowers and when they were ready you just rubbed them between your fingers through a filter paper into some water, rinse through your filter paper properly and then sprayed it on the plant. If there aren't many bumblebees around, surely you're spreading some pollen around. So the idea is for this cross-pollination technique or even self-pollination technique because you could use the technique for your slows if you just want the slow blossom um, to spread its own pollen on itself with no bumblebees around if it's very cold or perhaps you want to try your slow blossom on a plum tree or different varieties of plums or even mix all the pollen together anyway the idea is I'm just going to basically squeeze off these anthers, a the little yellow stalk the middle of the flower is the female part that's called the carpal okay? and the carpal which is the bit that sticks out you can see the tube that's all yellow the top of that's called the stigma now the actual pollen grain has to land on top of that they are oppositely charged okay and then the pollen grows its own tube down the style that's the tube the yellowish tube you can see just there okay if I just get you into focus and then it goes to the ovary a plum tree to me is a fantastic example of a, a fruit tree where you can get lots of pollen so I don't see why this technique wouldn't work and I don't know if it will but it's an experiment and as you know me on my channel I do like the doing experiments so why not spray the pollen around now while you can there aren't many bumblebees I can't hear many uh, buzzing around so the first thing I'm going to do is get this pollen rub it between my fingers into this water um, if any other bits of uh, flour go in there I'll, I'll filter it again uh, into another container and then put it into my spray that's the spray um, container and that's the top of it, the fine mister and then out we go to the tree that I want to pollinate and you know, see what we can do I've got another variety of plum tree in the back garden so I could use this one now to spray the pollen um, from this other plum tree onto that one if you do collect some flowers and it's a little bit damp say there's some morning dew on it etc I would suggest drying the flowers out when you collect them you could leave them on the windowsill not in direct sunshine but somewhere where they are going to dry out uh, it might take a couple of days and then you should find that the pollen grains will come off very easily when you rub them that way you can get them in the water and get them sprayed out there as quickly as possible um, incidentally I don't know whether the pollen grains in the water will keep in the fridge overnight perhaps they do I've just used water and pollen grains and hoping that when you spray it on the plant um, the pollen grains will dry a little bit um, out of the water in the sunshine and stick to the stigma and hopefully help your fruit to be pollinated. Here we have some flowers from the Blackthorn Slow. This is from my garden. It's an ornamental variety in that I suppose, although it's wild, it's one that produces very large slows and it is a member of the prunus family. I'm going to investigate in my experiment if I mix this pollen in with my plum pollen will it help in the fertilization process? I don't know but it seems to me they're both members of the prunus family and plums are said to originate from this type of species which makes prolific blossom so here I go basically all I'm going to do is pinch the male parts between my fingers much as the way you sprinkle um, something in an, in an ingredient in a recipe um, put it in the water filter it and then see what happens to the water when the pollen grains get in so the pollen I've got here from another plum tree because there's not many bumblebees around um, I can then just spray that um, all along this bough here where you've got on this plum tree and hopefully um, some of it will land in the middle of the flower, that's in the stigma 
and the idea is the best, the best time to do it is obviously when it's a nice dry day. It's a bit rainy today, but I'm only doing it to show you what it looks like. So you shake up your, your tree, and as you can see, there's the mist there. I can spray along. And all along the bow there, gets closer, I can, it's a bit windy, but you can get, you obviously get closer if it's safe. You step and just spray along the bow there with the pollen from another plum tree. So this pollen here is a mixture of sloes and another plum variety onto another plum tree. And obviously the more pollen you can get onto these, uh, on a nice dry sunny day, this is another plum tree from another plum tree, from the spray technique, just seems to me a bit more um, easy to do than going along with your um, fine hair brushes. And of course you can collect some flowers from this plum tree to be used to get some pollen for another plum tree so you can cross pollinate something else by the same technique. And hopefully the bumblebees will assist. Okay, so just remember the best time to collect pollen from flowers is on a nice sunny day. That way the pollen grains will be more dry and much more likely to come out when you rub them between your fingers into the water. It's good to use a filter, um, put it into a jar which is clean. I'm only using tap water, nothing else, and then spraying the pollen as quickly as I can back onto um, another tree using a mixture of pollen from other varieties. Maybe it'll help with the pollination if the bumblebees also help you as well. So what I've done with my blackthorn slow which I'm going to use to pollinate a plum tree is I've collected some of the pollen on a brush and I've um, dabbed that brush onto this filter and the rest of the flowers I've crushed them through my fingers and then kept rinsing water through this filter so that the pollen looks quite yellow will be in here and pollen is very is microscopically small and the gaps in this filter should be large enough for it to get through. So my washings net now looks a little bit yellow. And I'm simply going to put this yellow solution, which must contain pollen, into my little spray bottle with my little uh, top. And this is a mister spray. And I'm just going to go out now and mist my plum tree in the back garden. I don't know if it'll work or not, but let's see. Let's have a go. Let's see whether this is the better way of pollinating than just with a paintbrush when you've got a tall tree. If it works, you could pollinate... Um, loads of other trees just using the correct pollen from one it works best with plum because they, they there's so much um, pollen on them when you take it off on a brush you can see the tiny grains um, I'm gonna try this and experiment. so here we are back at the um, platform slow and I can just spray it now with its own pollen so this is self fertile of course I could also put some plum pollen on it as well but at the moment as you can see there's a lot of blossom on this so I'm just spraying it with loads and loads of its own pollen. See if it works. So hopefully this should do the job. As you can see, this solution here um, it's a fine mist. I'll, I'll keep it overnight, but hopefully the pollen will live and keep spraying. Only one pollen grain needs to stick. So as you can see, this is my plum tree in the back garden, and this is my um, solution of pollen, which looks very yellowy. And the idea is to spray this using this fine mister, and you can do it more than once. Some people recommend doing it at least twice, and it should reach even to the top there on my mister if I go up on a ladder. So I'll do a bit tonight, and I'll come back again. The flowers are ready to pollinate, as you can see, they're open, so I'll give it a go. Please like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to join in the experiment with me, well, the equipment's quite simple and easy to get hold of. Maybe you could try it with other fruit trees as well. Maybe cherries 
as well and other stone fruits, not just plum trees. I've got almonds in the front garden as well and perhaps even self-fertile varieties might benefit from having their own pond sprayed around if the bumblebees aren't around, for instance the blackthorn slow.